everybody this is stephanie the hands heart and hair of cornerstonecreate.com welcome to my youtube channel thanks for being here with me today today i want to do a modified 10 cards one kit but instead of doing that i'm going to be doing one stamp set one paper pad and honestly when it comes down to it i only used one 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper from this paper pad so this is the Bow Bunny Cup of Joe stamp set. I had to have this when I saw this in Tuesday morning. Like I just, I could not pass it by. And as soon as I saw this stamp set, I saw, uh, I saw in my mental mind, the paper pad that I was going to use for this. And I went back to my layer and found that this is the Sunday morning, the Sunday morning paper pad by Craftsmith definitely have to get it if you don't have it go find it this is a great paper pad it has like realistic photos in there it has some um, some cartoony looking ones and overall is tea and coffee I'm, how can you go wrong with that I've been talking about this all week so I know I can't go wrong with that I've been talking about it all week to the point where I had to break out my tea and coffee stamp set with my tea and coffee paper pad so let's go ahead and start off with my first card I love this little coffee cup stamp I feel like it's something that you'd get from either Starbucks or maybe your local coffee shop. I'm starting off this card by cutting a piece of my paper and I think I cut it down to about maybe an inch and a half or maybe an inch and a quarter wide and five and a half inches tall. Then I'm going to take my Memento Desert Sand Ink Dewdrop and I'm going to do some direct to paper inking on the sides. I'm going to glue this down to my card base and I'm going to try and make sure that as much of my card base is covered. And when I say this, I mean like I'm trying not to have any space at the top or the bottom. I want this to go all the way, pretty much full bleed. Now that I have this down, you can see on the edge that my director paper inking definitely gave my edge some definition so that it didn't just fade into the card. Now I'm going to break out my We Are Memory Makers Precision Press Advance. I'm going to put my stamp down where I want it to be and I'm going to take the acrylic block part of my precision press and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it down to pick up that stamp. I plan on doing some coloring with my alcohol markers. I'm going to stamp this with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink just to make sure that none of my colors run and that the black ink doesn't run into my color. This was my first time using this stamp and the ink didn't pick up too well. So whenever that happens, I take out my Versamark Watermark ink pad and I just pat my new stamp down with the Versamark and rub it in. It kind of pre-treats the stamp so that it'll pick up ink better the next time. So now you see how well that picked up. I suggest you do this anytime you get a brand new stamp or anytime you have a stamp that's being a little difficult that you can't get it to pick up any ink. I'm going to stamp this down a second time and then I'm going to go my merry way into the favorite part which is some alcohol coloring. My first color is going to be E16 Light Beige. I'm using this color just to set down a wall of color and have a baseline for the background of my coffee cup, like a, what is that, the, the hot holder? Now just a note of concern, some of you may have heard, and I'm still trying to confirm, but the price of Copic markers are supposed to increase. Now me, I don't use Copics, I kind of want it to, but Copics are like $8 a marker. so. I think if they increase, they'll be going up to $9 a marker. I would suggest that now is a good time to get some or at least get your first set of like basic Copics if you wanted to get those. I know Scrapbook Pile is always selling them a little bit cheaper and you can probably go into Michael's and get them with a coupon. Now I'm going to blend this out with E17. I started off with E16. E17 is really close in color, but it darkens it up just enough so that I have some dimension on my cup holder. Now that my cup holder is done, my mental model had this cup as a Starbucks cup, so I was going to leave it white. And when you want to keep things white, you always want to do a shadow of some kind so that against a shadow, everything else looks white. So for my shadow, I'm going to use N2, which is a neutral gray. And I'm going to use N2 for most of my shadowing. I'm going to go on to my actual cup and I'm going to color in with some N2. And in some places where I want my shadow to be a little bit darker, I'm going to use N3 and blend it back out with N2. So I'm really good for using two color blends on this card. Now 
Now back into the precision stamping press, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. The stamp set didn't have much in the way of sentiment, and I didn't want to keep reusing the same one, so I definitely used the coffee sentiment with all the hearts. Now this is my fault. I didn't take off my coffee cup stamp, and I should have. I should have stopped being lazy, but I didn't. And because I didn't take that off, there was still some residual ink on the stamp, and it got stamped on top of the cup. So it's still up there. It left a little trace, but it didn't bother me to the point where I felt like I re needed, where I needed to redo the whole card. At first, I was going to stamp this with Tuxedo Black Memento ink, but in keeping with the brown themes and, you know, just the overall tone of the card, I decided to wipe off that black ink and stamp with the Rich Cocoa Memento ink. I just feel like the brown kept the card together better instead of just having that, you know, that really dark black just stick out against everything else. Now I'm going to take my time and I'm going to stamp this coffee in the hearts twice just so that I could get a nice bold dark coffee sentiment. It was about this point that I realized that I had a little shadow on my coffee cup but it wasn't too bad. I kind of liked it so I decided to keep it and not redo the whole card and you know it, it was fine the way it was. Now let's go ahead and get into the second card. I like the little sentiment in the Fueled by Coffee sentiment. Like one of my favorite bands of all time is Fall Out Boy and their label is called Fueled by Ramen. I think about that every single time I see this sentiment. I'm going to start off by using my We Are Memory Makers Precision Press Advance to stamp my coffee cup. This precision press has been a true blessing. I really like how versatile it is. And you never would think that being able to take that acrylic block on the top on and off really buys you into anything. But just for me in my crafting space, I don't have to worry about where the door is going to land. Like with my uh, Tim Holtz, I always have to be cautious because I have so many things on my desk that the door opens up on the hinge and it like crashes into something, causes something else to fall. And that's nobody's fault but my own. But by being able to take off this acrylic block top so very easily, I can just put it down by my feet and pick it back up when I'm ready for it. So I really like that I've used this and I find that I'm using this more now i'm not using it more than my tim holtz i feel like i'm still using them about 50 50 but going from 100 percent tim holtz to using 50 percent tim holtz and 50 percent we are memory makers precision press advance i mean i feel like that's something now i'm going to start off with my water coloring i'm using my tombow dual brush pen uh, number 452 it's a very kind of blue color I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper. It's the 9 by 12 sheet. I just cut it down and uh, cut it down so that I could get this little coffee mug on it. And the rest of the page I just put back with the paper pad so I can use it at a later date. Using my Tombow, I'm just going to put color down where the cup is going to be dark. So on the sides and on my handle and a little bit on the top of the cup. After that, I'm going to use my water brush pen to drag that color out. My aim is to leave a little bit of shine on the cup, so I'm not going to really try and go really heavy and really dark just off the top. To do this coloring, I'm using the Jane Davenport Fine Water uh, Watercolor Brush. I find it's really nice. It has a little well and it's flexible so you can just squeeze it. I really like those brushes. I've seen a couple of other ones, but these are really nice and easy to use. So using my watercolor pen, I'm just going to drag out all the color and I wind up completely covering the cup. It's still light, but it's kind of also not what I wanted it to be color wise. So it wound up being more on the blue spectrum than I wanted. So I'm going to come back in with my Tombow dual brush pen and this time I'm going to add 296, which is a definite blue green. I felt like that contrast with my brown way more. The, the green gives it you know, and it's weird to say, but I guess it gives it a little bit of warmth more than just what that blue gave it. Now, you don't have to be a stickler like I am about where I'm laying the color down. You can lay it down however and wherever you want. I just wanted it to be on the side of my cups because as you can kind of see, it definitely gives it some depth of field and some depth of perception when you just put it on the sides of the cup. And now see, there's that shine that I was kind of looking for. It kind of looks a little crazy now that it's wet, but trust me, when it dries, it's going to look great. 
it amazes me every time I use Tombow um, uh, dual brush markers to do my watercoloring just because, you know, no, I don't know, maybe there aren't but so many mediums that I've used in my life. But just to be able to put ink down in one spot and draw it out with water, it's like, you know, like, what formulation is that? Where did they do that? Like, who had that idea? And, you know, like, I don't know the history of watercoloring, but, I, you know, I always... I don't know, I guess I just always thought about just having pools of pigment and, you know, getting really, really messy, which is kind of why I don't like watercoloring. But being able to just get a Tombow dual brush marker and put my color down where I want it, you know, like it's watercoloring, but it's a, a different kind of skill with watercolor. Probably not as skilled as the actual watercolor is, you know, like they I'm gonna let them shine with that but I really like using these markers it's nice and easy for a non-artist kind of person like me so I don't even know if I let my cup dry before I started cutting it out but I'm cutting it out with some some Westcoff scissors just regular desk scissors that I have on my desk I didn't do anything special but I didn't you know I can cut out the handle with those scissors you know those scissors are too big and they just don't give you the you know the the ability to be able to cut something like that so i used my fisker's finger knife and i love this finger knife like i've used it so many times to do so many things like i mean it works just like like an exacto um whole knife or uh, an exacto uh, knife blade but you know like I feel like I get more control using the finger knife so using the finger knife and my little yellow scissors I cut out the inside of the handle of that mug in retrospect I probably didn't need to do that but I was in a cutting frenzy and I just felt like I needed to cut everything that just wasn't helping my cup out so I would suggest that if you don't have a finger knife or scissors that are small enough to cut that handle out leave it alone so now i'm just going to do some director paper inking i'm using memento rich cocoa ink to do this and this is just going to make it look like my cutting was superb it's almost going to look like i had a die cut just because the director paper inking will color those edges and it'll take some away that frayed look that just comes with watercolor paper if you're doing it with scissors or in my case i might not have been using the the sharpest of scissors those are kind of safety scissors that i keep on my desk so that my kids don't get into things now I'm going to clear my desk and get everything out the way so I can actually construct the card. So I'm going back to using the same piece of paper, the same 12 by 12 inch piece of paper from earlier. I liked it because it kind of looked like steam and my coffee cup kind of needed that in its life. I'm going to use my Tombow uh, mono adhesive roller. I tried to use other rollers and they just don't work as well as the Tombow to me like the Elmer's it all like the runner on that always gets stuck I waste more glue than I use glue I mm, I will never use Elmer's tape runner unless they like change that formula or change the roller device now Elmer's glue the the uh, the liquid glue I use that all day I, they they know what they're doing there but just getting into the adhesive dry adhesive market Mm. It just it go with Tombow or another brand. I think Ad Tech is good as well. All right, so I'm going to take my scallop punch. It's one and a half inches, and I'm going to punch out a white piece of paper, and then I'm going to use some gold washi tape that I have on my desk, and I'm just going to put that across the bottom of my card, and I'm going to glue my mug on top of that. The white piece of paper kind of makes it look like it's sitting on a doily, and I threw the gold in there just because I wanted it to kind of be sitting on top of something without it looking like it's floating in the atmosphere. I'm going to put a ton of glue on this just because that watercolor paper is a little bit heavier than other kinds of paper, and I want to make sure that it doesn't fall off, especially being on top of that washi, which is kind of slick, and it doesn't give you much to grip on. I'm going to use three of these gems. Uh, was it? I just like the odd number. I think it gives it some kind of visual interest. And uh, with these gems, like I really just found on my desk. I don't, I tend not to use gems and enamel dots and all that kind of stuff a lot, even though I have a lot of them. And I'm trying to change that because they just, they add a lot to, they, they, lot, they accessorize a lot to the card. And I feel like that's important. So now we're going to use my favorite sentiment, the fueled by coffee that reminds me of Fallout Boy. So I didn't want to heat emboss this because I'd already done my card and washi 
is known not to stand up against the test of heat. So I decided to do the next best thing, which was to use Gold Perfect Pearl. I'm going to ink up my stamp using my Versamark watermark ink pad. So my watermark ink pad is very inked up with black and it might even be another color or two. So that's why when you see me stamp it down on my card, it's very dark. Normally it wouldn't be that dark, but I only use this for heat embossing and perfect pearl. I don't really do a whole bunch of watermark inking. So it doesn't really do a whole lot or it doesn't affect the color of anything that I use it for. Now if you are going to do some watermark stamping or if you want to just make your or if you want to use your watermark ink pad to kind of make some of your stuff a little bit darker against a, a different kind of background then yeah don't ink up your Versamark pad but hey what's done is done. If you get a perfect pearl sampler set in the store or if you order it online, normally it comes with uh, four different perfect pearls and I think that's perfect pearl, perfect gold, perfect copper, and perfect bronze and it'll come with two brushes. You use the small brush to put your perfect pearl down and you use the big brush to wipe it away. So uh, well, I think it also comes with your perfect medium which I'm not sure what the perfect medium is but I'll, uh, but mine, my pad was kind of very dry when I got it and it never really worked so I stopped using perfect pearl for a long time because I thought it was just ineffective and it didn't do anything. I think I did some googling on it and found out that yeah that happened to a lot of people and you just use versus mark so I'm not sure if they're similar they could be I'm not 100% sure but I do know that you get the same results and if you want to um, if you want to study your perfect pearl down just spray it lightly with some water or even get a fixative from Michaels or your favorite cap store so I have all my fixative well I'm sorry I have all my perfect pearl down and now I need to wipe it away the perfect pearl is going to stick to the versa mark and is going to come right on off of everything else so i'm not sure if like with heat embossing like you kind of pat it with your anesthetic tool before and then and that kind of ensures that it doesn't stick to the rest of the paper every time i've used perfect pearl like whatever doesn't stick to the versa mark it does get on well not all of it but it kind of gets onto the rest of the paper but i always kind of just include that into the effect of my card it just gives the whole card a little bit of shimmer on top of what you get on your sentiment after that i'm going to cut off all my tape and i'm going to be done with my card so with this tape i tried to make sure that it was stuck down as flat as it could be i wanted to make sure that it didn't come up on the edges Whew, thank you for sticking with me this long if you're still here. We're going to get into the third and final card that I did using this stamp set and this one sheet of 12 by 12 inch paper. As you can see, my desk got a little messy with all the perfect pearl. There's a whole gold smear on my desk. It happens sometimes with perfect pearl. You just got to be really careful. This was the card that I wanted to do the most with the least amount of space. I'm going to put, it was, and then I still have one more stamp from the stamp set that I want to use. And when I do these kind of videos, I always try to use every single stamp. Sometimes I'm successful, most times I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But I'm going to get that last stamp in, which if you go back to the very beginning, is that little heart with all the shine marks coming from it. I'm going to use my Versamark to put that stamp down and I'm going to do some heat embossing. I, I'm also going to kind of do some heat embossed resist because I'm going to do watercoloring inside of my heat embossed image. I'm going to heat emboss with white Ranger, uh, Ranger white uh, heat embossing powder. I am getting down to the nitty gritty of that embossing powder and to be honest I'm surprised that it lasted this long especially with all my children and all the embossing powders that have gone to the wayside and they lost the battle so congratulations Ranger White you're almost done. So I'm going to use my Wagner heat tool. This was about $20 and I got it from Lowe's. I picked it up from there because the heating tools that you can find in craft stores frequently have really bad reviews and a lot of places say they don't work well. So I went ahead and went to someone who knows what they're doing. Like this is what Wagner does. They make tools. So yeah, and I've never had any problem with it.
So now that my mug is heat embossed, I'm going to put this back down on the magnetic side of the We Are Memory Makers of Precision Press Events. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Why do I say that every time? It's a mouthful. But anyway, I'm going to put this back down and I'm going to stamp my uh, my disposable on the run coffee cup right next to my coffee mug. So I've seen in pictures where you can go to a coffee shop and they serve you out of mugs. That must be in like European countries or just abroad in general because I don't think I've ever seen this in the United States anywhere like I don't know maybe they're celebrating your coffee at home and then your coffee on the run I you know it'd be interesting to note but I have both of mine beside because that's where I need it and I, I need the cup I need the the mug of coffee and I need the on the run coffee my heat embossing is done and I'm going to get into my water coloring with my distress ink so when i went to the stamp scrap and art tour a couple of weeks ago one of the demos said that using distress ink if you're not going to do real watercoloring was like the best thing that you could watercolor with and i tend to agree so you know like i i do a lot of watercoloring with my distress oxides because i have a ton of distress oxides but because of what she said and just because of my experience you know, confirming what she said, you know, I'm going to start picking up some more distress inks and getting more cubes. So I'm going to put this down on my acrylic block and I'm just going to use that to paint my uh, heat embossed images. I diluted my ink just a little bit with water from my uh, from my water brush pen and then I use uh, I mix it up a little bit and paint that directly onto my card. I like that I put this on top of pattern paper because it kind of, that pattern gives like a little under painting that goes uh, that goes with my coffee mug and my coffee cup now this technique is kind of new to me i don't like i'm learning watercoloring but i'm learning like watercoloring with inks not with not with like pigment pools and all that and i learned this taking the irresistible inking class with alta new i want to say the class was about ten dollars it might have been a little bit cheaper but i i think there were about four videos in there if not more and each video is a different technique that you use with inking so even like direct to paper inking they discuss that in that class with st using uh with using distress ink and using it on an acrylic block and painting with a water pen they discussed that so it was a fun class the teacher was fun and the techniques are you know invaluable in card making so i'll link that below in case you're interested in seeing what that class is all about now I painted my cup and my mug in and I like the way they look but on my mug like there's no difference between the hot sleeve and the rest of the cup so I kind of didn't like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe away all the diluted distress ink on my acrylic block and I'm just going to uh, with, and I'm going to add some more ink but I'm not going to dilute it the second time. I'm going to use my water brush pen to paint that up there, but I'm not going to use any water from the pen. So the pen is going to pick up 100% ink and is going to put down 100% ink, except for maybe a little bit of water that might already be in the brush. But I'm not squeezing and I'm not adding any extra water. So it's going to be a little bit darker than what's already on the cup. And that's going to give me the contrast that I need. I'm going to paint the sleeve and I'm going to paint the top where you sip from. So one great thing about heat embossing these images is that the heat embossing is going to resist the distress ink and the water. So the, the white shows up clear and bright and I don't even have to wipe any paint off of them because it's just going to resist the water. So now that all of that is done, I'm going to let that air dry. It doesn't take too long for that to happen, but I'm going to use my last image. So this is the first time I'm using this heart stamp with all the shine marks coming from it. So I'm going to ink it up with Versamark, wipe it off a little bit, and then I'm going to ink it up with my Distress Ink. Now in case I haven't mentioned it, I'm using Vintage Photo Distress Ink for all of this brown. And you see with just differing amounts of water and differing amounts of, of uh, how how much ink that I'm using you get different colors so this ink has been a very versatile I'm getting all these watercolory browns I'm getting the dark browns and then I'm about to use it to directly stamp this one uh, this one last image and you see all the different tones that I'm getting just from this one little ink cube 
I talked a little bit much on that part, but I'm going to break out a craft colored card that's already been pre-scored. I bought this from Michaels a while ago, and for whatever reason, I just haven't used my craft cards that much. So I'm going to use it this time. I'm going to use this sentiment one more time for this card, and this is going to be the Fueled by Coffee. Instead of doing the Perfect Pearls, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is just heat embossing. Now, I will say I was very bad, and I was supposed to use my anti-static heat tool, and you know, I thought I had used it, but I must not have used it appropriately because I got a little flex at the uh, after I was done heat embossing. So you can just erase those off, or if they're nice and hard, you can just flick them off with your fingernail or maybe a credit card or something like that. Just be careful not to mess up your paper because no one wants to heat emboss something and then can't use it because the paper's all messed up and looks janky. To do this cutting, I'm going to use my Fiskars Bypass Cutter. I didn't know this was called a bypass cutter. I think you can also call it like a guillotine cutter just by virtue of what it looks like. But I find this to be really easy. The one thing that I will say annoys me about this is that it only goes out to five inches. So a lot of times as a card maker, I want to do things that are five and a half inches and I either have to estimate or use a different Fiskars tool. So that's only a mild inconvenience. It's way more convenient for other kind of things and that straight edge on the top helps you definitely cut straight so it's, def it's one of my favorite tools but I wish it was a little bit wider one thing about this sentiment is that it's rather large so it takes up a lot of real estate on my card so when you're doing your card if you get this stamp set make sure that you take that into account and that you you know like with my images my images were more so towards the middle so what you could do is raise that up a little bit more so that your uh, sentiment could fit on the bottom of the card a little bit better like if I would have put this sentiment directly over there with the images it wouldn't have worked it would have been way too small of a space for that sentiment so just be cautious and be mindful of the of how big your sentiments are when you put them on a second separate piece of paper all right, so now that that's done, I'm going to use my Tombow Dry Adhesive. I'm going to put that on the back of that uh, sentiment, and then I'm going to glue that onto my images. You can see that my sentiment sticks out a little bit more than what the, than the paper that my images are on, but that's not going to matter because it's all going to fit on the front of my craft card stock that my card is going to be on. So all the different browns give it a wonderful effect, and I like the way they all culminate on the card. Thank you for being here with me today. It's always a pleasure. All of my supplies will be linked below in the description and these cards will be available on my shop. Thank you for being here. Make sure you visit me across all of my other social medias. Have a good day guys. Bye.